Hi everyone, it's Michael Cappuccini here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Kindle Scribe from Amazon. So I've had this for uh, at least a couple weeks now, and uh, I love it. Frankly, it's probably my favorite Kindle ever. Uh, it's fantastic, and I did the premium bundle, which comes with the case. So it comes with this leather case here with this kind of blotchy design, but it's, a, it's actually really a nice case. And the case itself is open on the sides, and I do have the... Um, pen snapped in here, although you can slide it in here, which makes it actually much more secure and easier to hold and read if you're going to read it in the case. So if you're going to read it in the case, I recommend putting it in here, uh, not on the side, but you have the option. Um, so there you are. And then that's the charging port, the power button. So that's interesting because I'm used to the you know other older Kindles uh, or the different models where the charging port would be on the bottom and the power button would probably be up top or somewhere. But they, you know, it's a different design, so it's the way it is. And it's in here magnetically, so it uh, will unlock and lock based on how you do it. It's almost like an iPad case, really. And then the magnet, the way it works, is you fold it here and then you just slide it up. So let's just slide it up into a triangle, right? And then you can do that. So you can write on it like a pad of paper. Or if you want to just prop it up to read, you can do that too. So there you are. But um, yeah, so let's go to, let me just show you the device itself. So you can see I just pulled the pencil out here. And so this is the premium pen or pencil. So it's got the eraser. So it's just like a little spring that kind of does a little, I guess when you push it in, that's when it triggers the erase function. It also has a shortcut button. So you would press and hold this and the default is highlight. So you would press and hold this to highlight. The positioning of it's a little um, not great because it's kind of right where you would rest your fingers. So you I've accidentally pressed this button multiple times because it's right there. So it's useful, but also not. And then the tip is replaceable. So to have that pencil and paper feel, it has this tip that wears away. The Remarkable tablet does the same thing. Uh, and the scribe comes with, I think it's five replacement tips. So I've read that, that should last you a year. Um, and it does feel like pencil and paper, I'll say that, because the iPad, it's a plastic pencil on glass. So it's a plastic on glass, which obviously feels nothing like the real thing. And it has a kind of a nice little matte finish to the, the pen. It feels like it's got a nice weight to it. Um, it's nice. I like it. Anyway, so let's check out the, um, so this is the home screen, right, where it shows you recent items. Uh, based on your reading, they're trying to get you to read other stuff. It tells you how to easily add files to your Kindle library so you can share files with yourself that way and then edit them on here if you like. Um, and it says, you know, more books like whatever you're reading. Um, and then down here you can go to library, notebooks, and more. So if you go to your library, let's see, downloaded. All right, so if you go to downloaded, uh, it'll have whatever's on your device, newspapers, books, things of that nature. So let's pop open this book, okay? And let me show you how you can do the sticky note thing. So there we are, it adjusted. So let's say you want to select this word and leave a note. How do you do that? Well, it's highlight, note, or share. So you would click note. And you could either do a handwritten note or a text note. If you do a text note, it's literally just a keyboard pops up. You can either use the pencil or your finger and type it in. And actually, the pencil is, I think, more responsive, frankly. So it's, you could see, like, right? It's pretty quick. So that's pretty cool uh, compared to the finger. Because I know that on other Kindle devices, when you use your finger, there's a bit of a delay. Now for the handwriting, there's really no delay um, with what you write and what appears on the screen. So, all right, pretty quick. And if you can want to undo it, you just do undo, undo, undo. 
right? Then you could also do, um, there's different thicknesses. So you could do fine, thin, medium, thick, heavy. And these are all the same for everything. So it's either, you know, the, the pen or pencil, the marker. So the marker is much thicker, right? As you can see, because it's basically a highlighter. And then you could do erase. So you could either erase this way, if you have the premium pencil, so you do it that way, or you can do, you know, you can select it. You can also do this where, uh, let's go here, and you could do erase page. So let's say you just tap erase page and it literally erases everything on that page there. So that's it. So, I mean, that's how the sticky note thing works, but let's say you leave a note. How does it appear? Let's just write test. All messy and stuff, right? Let's X out of it. And then down here, you'll see a little document next to the name. So the name or whatever it is you selected is highlighted. And the next to it is a little document icon. You tap that and boom, there's your note. Now, if you want to view all the notes in your book or whatever it is that you're writing your notes in, you can do that. You can also move this to the bottom. If you, wanna, if you don't like the box up here, you could have it down here. Or you could move it back up. Or you could just delete it. There you are. And then uh, it does keep whatever you took a note on highlighted for some reason. So then you have to delete that highlight if you want to get rid of it. But yeah, so that's how it works, is taking notes. You, you're not writing in the margins or anything like that. Instead, they decided to do this whole sticky note deal, and that is how it operates. One thing to point out is that it does have a warm light. I've never had a Kindle with a warm light before. I've had a Kobo with a warm light, and that was good, but distracting, because it was really red. So the warm light turned all the way up. Is not that red at all. It's actually kind of uh, more orange than red, which I appreciate. I think it's um, easy on the eyes, and but also helps you know cut down on the blue light. So it's really useful. And then I set it to be on a timer, so 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. It'll automatically turn on. I also have auto brightness turned on, so depending on the room that I'm in and the lighting conditions, the, brighting will, the, the brightness will adjust. Uh, so it'll get brighter or darker based on my environment. And that's really helpful. So that is the warm light. Very nice feature. Um, so let's go back to notebooks. So notebooks, this is really the one major change in the whole layout here, is that you have notebooks. So you get notebooks and let's create a new notebook. So you can have different folders if you want, but let's create a new notebook. And you can see there's different templates for you to work with. Um, you know, there's different types of lines and things for you, for you to do. So I'm just gonna ch pick this really basic one and we'll just call it, you know, test. Create. Oh, you know what? I think it's because I already have one called test and it won't allow it. So let's do test one. That's interesting. It didn't tell me that I couldn't create it. It just did like this thing where it just didn't work. That's weird, isn't it? Anyway, so this is just like the sticky note. There's literally no difference. The only difference is you have more space to work with and you have different templates that you can work with. So you could put, you know, you could just write whatever you want. The, oh, see, I accidentally clicked the highlighter because this button is in a terrible spot. So you can accidentally click it and it just screws you up. So while this, the, this button is nice, it's also a pain in the ass. So let's see, the dog barked. And who knows, you could just, if you want to doodle, you can doodle. I mean, you can do whatever you want here. It's not really just for writing. If you just want to draw and have some fun artistically, you can do that. Um, 
and then like I said you can erase the whole page if you want you could erase just a section of it and it's all gone now if you want to have multiple pages it's actually quite simple so this is everything starts off as one page if you want to add a page you just swipe now all of a sudden it says page one of two so oh i'm on the eraser let's go to marker eh, let's go to this um yeah medium is fine right and then page three we'll call page three okay and then if you want to go back test page one page two gamma page two page three so that's how it works. Uh, it's basically an endless notebook for you to work with. And the, the writing is pretty responsive. I mean, as I'm writing it, it's appearing. There's really almost no delay, no detectable delay with what I'm writing and what's appearing on the screen. So that's really, really helpful. And I love how big the screen is. The screen is the, it's the biggest Kindle ever. So it's really fantastic uh, for reading, for writing, and just... Um, just immer immersing yourself in whatever it is that you're you're doing and like i'll just like lie on the couch and have it propped up like this like on my uh my stomach or my chest or whatever and just read and just be relaxed and then if you know you're in a work environment or you're at school and you want to take notes you just put it down like that and boom take your notes so it's really a great uh, productivity device as well as a you know a leisure device one other thing I want to show you, because I think it's interesting to note, is, so let's say you go to, well, I guess I could just go right up here. Let's go to the store. See, so the Kindle store. All right, so if you want to buy something on here, <clears throat> you can buy on here. And they have Kindle and Audible. So if you go to Audible, <clears throat> and I use Audible all the time, on my phone, uh, primarily. <clears throat> Every day I'm listening to an audiobook. And I have a ton of audiobooks. But you can see a big difference here, right? You go to the Kindle store, and it's huge. There's a lot going on. It's very visual. There's just, you know, a lot to see. Uh, it's shown Kindle Unlimited and all this good stuff. Well, one thing to point out, though, is that Kindle Unlimited is represented in the Kindle store on this device. Comixology Unlimited is not. So if you actually go to an a book here that's available in Comixology Unlimited, it will make you buy it. It will say, oh, you can buy it for this amount. Then if you go to Comixology on your computer or on your phone or on your Fire tablet, it will show you, oh, you can borrow this book through Comixology Unlimited, assuming you have a subscription. So they don't have Comixology Unlimited integration on the e-readers yet. I think that's a shame because this device is beautiful and big and perfect for that, right? You know, you can definitely read comic books on here and it's it's pretty cool. Um, but the fact that Comixology Unlimited isn't uh, recognized is kind of crappy, I think. But anyway, let's take a look at Audible because that's another one of my complaints is that Audible integration is pretty piss poor. I mean, look at it. You have all this real estate to work with and they literally show you four books. And a pitiful amount of genres like what is it back to the top you are at the top come on man <laughs> it's silly and let's say you select a book an audiobook and it says buy for one credit and it says credits available zero i have 12 credits yeah i have 12 credits and it's telling me i have zero now if i go to audible.com or if i look at audible app on my phone it's going to say i have 12 credits but on this device and every e-reader that Amazon is available. The Audible integration is just piss poor, similar to the Comixology Unlimited. You know, it's, I mean, at least Audible's recognized, you know, a Comixology Unlimited isn't even recognized, but it's bizarre because if you go to my library on here, it'll show you all the audiobooks that I have. It's current. But if you go to buy one with the credits that you have, it says you have no credits. Then it, this store is useless because you can't actually spend your credits. I don't understand it at all. I'm not sure why this issue hasn't been addressed before because it's been an issue for quite some time. So like, look, we go back to my library and you know, 
you'll be able to see here a bunch of Audible books. They're all here. So they're here to download and listen to using Bluetooth, but it doesn't keep track of my credits. Bizarre. Now let's say we go to a comic book. Let's do that for you so you can check it out. So comics, okay? We're gonna do a comic book so you can check it out. The stuff downloads really quickly on this. That's one thing I should point out. It says this device connects to, I have uh, Verizon, Fios, right? And there's two actually uh, internet connections. One is 5G and one is not. This can actually connect to the 5G uh, Wi-Fi, where I've had other Kindle devices that simply can't because they're just, I guess they're not built that way. So these newer Kindles can uh, connect to fa the fastest Wi-Fi you have available. But let's say we download, all right, Sandman, okay? So we're going to tap that and watch. It should download relatively quickly. 29. And it's a large book. 64. 97. Okay. And oh, of course, it moved over here. Let's open it up and just take a peek. So do not want to mark it as currently reading. Now, let's just skip ahead. Do want, I want to get to the panels. Okay, so let's do the double tap thing. So you can do the guided view. So you can see, it's a um, nice big screen. And the quality is quite good. Now the only thing is, is that if you have a comic book that's in color, you're kind of missing out on that. But if you want to read a comic book on an e-reader, I mean, this is the biggest screen you're going to get. So it is nice that way. All right, so there you are. And actually, I borrowed this book through Comixology Unlimited. So even though Comixology Unlimited isn't, even though I can't borrow new books through this e-reader, I can access ones I've already borrowed. It's really baffling. Uh, I just don't get it. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, that's really how you do it. I mean, this is the device itself. I mean, um, the Kindle Scribe and the battery life on it. Here's the more in case you're curious as to what's under more. Your reading list, Goodreads, uh, web browser settings, legal. Battery life. So the battery life for this device is really good. It's the best battery life I've ever seen for a Kindle. It's lasted me weeks, um, you know, without a charge and, uh, yeah, it's, it lasts long. What I found is that Oasis would die very quickly. It just, it, and I think it's because the device is so big that they can actually have a um, bigger battery inside of it. So this just snaps in to the uh, case. It just rests there and it snaps in because the back of this is metal. So you have this metal backing and you have these little rubber feet. So if you lay it flat on the counter, it will be elevated. So, I mean, that's nice. So you don't necessarily have to have a case. And you can see it's very thin, but it's metal. So it's kind of cold, cold to the touch, you know? And then you just drop it in here and boom, it's back in. But I think because it's such a large device, they can have a large battery. So that's really helpful. Um, and then, yeah, you would just, if you want to snap the pen, boom, you can put it there or you can put it on the sleeve here and slide it in there, which is nice and snug. But that is the Kindle Scribe. So the Kindle Scribe is a fantastic device. And let me show you the difference between the Kindle, the basic Kindle and the Kindle Scribe. Check that out. So this is the basic Kindle. That's the size difference. And actually I really love this because this is nice and tiny. You could put this in the back of your jeans, uh, like your back pocket, you could put it in a, um, I mean, it, you can put it in a little handbag. I mean, this is fantastic, right? This is great for travel. This is also good for work and school and all that. But if you really want like a compact Kindle, like this is fantastic. And these retail at like $99, um, where this is obviously significantly more. So it really just depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for 
um, you know, the fancy schmancy candle, or if you want the basic candle. And actually, I'm going to do a separate video on this one. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the Kindle Scribe. Is it worth it? I think so. I think it's a fantastic device. It's probably my favorite Kindle, aside from this basic one. And um, I'm glad I got it, and I use it every day. So thanks for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts on the Kindle Scribe down below. Do you own one? Do you plan on buying one? What, which one do you, are you going to get? There's different uh, sizes. I think it's like 32, 64, um, different, uh, you know, storage sizes and things like that. So which one are you getting? Are you getting a bundle? I got the bundle that included the case and the pen. And it comes with an AC adapter. Um, so, you know, it's a good deal. But uh, it's definitely going to get a lot of use. But thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, visit me at michaelcappuccini.com for more great content. And feel free to comment down below with your thoughts on the Kindle Scribe and your favorite Kindle and what you're reading lately, if you like. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great day.